Hello, my name is Ira Idol, and today I am presenting about Sins Invalid and how they conquer the stigma surrounding disability. Uh, the idea of disability is heavily stigmatized in our society, so much so that the word disability itself is frowned upon by many. Over the past few decades, the term special needs has become a popular euphemism for disability. Rather than identifying a person as having a disability or having a certain disability, representation is scarce and often teeters easily into dehumanizing and commodifying ableist tropes in which disabled people e exist either for the edification of abled viewers or else to elicit their pity and disgust at the spectacle of our freakishness. And in this context, ableism is defined as preference of abled bodies over disabled bodies. Disabled people have attempted to conquer this stigma in a variety of different ways, one such way being through performance. One of those companies that I will be discussing today is Sins Invalid, and their 2016 production, Birthing, Dying, Becoming Crip Wisdom, 10th Anniversary Performance. The image is a white background with the silhouette of a person in a wheelchair hanging upside down with their arms held out with the text Sins Invalid displayed. Before I discuss the production, I would like to go over what Sins Invalid is and what they do. Taken from their Our Mission page a section on their website, Sins Invalid is a disability justice-based performance project that incubates and celebrates artists with disabilities, centralizing um, artists of color and LGBT gender variant artists and of communities who have been historically marginalized. Led by disabled people of color, Sins and Valid's performance work explores the themes of sexuality, embodiment, and the, and the disabled body, developing provocative work where paradigms of normal and sexy are challenged, offering instead a vision of beauty and sexuality inclusive of all bodies and communities. They define disability broadly to include people with physical impairments, people who belong to a, sen a sensory minority, people with emotional disabilities, people with cognitive challenges, and those with chronic, chronic and severe illnesses. They understand the experience of disability to occur within any and all walks of life, with deeply felt connections to all community impacted by the medicalization of their bodies, including trans, gender variant, and intersex people, and others whose bodies do not conform to our culture's notions of normal or functional. Their goals are to promote leadership opportunities for people with disabilities, provide a supportive and politically engaged space, and develop and present strong artistic work that explores sexuality and the non-normative body. They do this by offering political education workshops, presenting multidisciplinary performances done by people with disabilities for broad audiences, and organizing performance workshops for community members with and without disabilities. The main topic of this presentation is their 2016 production, Birthing, Dying, Becoming Crip Wisdom, and how it destigmatizes disability. Before I continue, I would like to define the term crip used in this context. Borrowing from the book Feminist Queer Crip, written by Alison Kafer, crip is shorthand for the word cripple, which has been and is used as an, ins as an insult towards people with disabilities, but which has been reappropriated as an intragroup term of empowerment and solidarity. Thus, crip is a term which has, been, has much currency in, the, in disability activism and culture, but still might seem harsh to the, those outside those communities. The disability community has reclaimed this term, and the way it is used in this production by Sins Invalid is reflective of that. Birthing, Dying, Becoming Crip Wisdom is a two-hour piece involving 13 artists that bring evocative explorations of creation, aging, and mortality, a journey through genesis, transformative power, and earth. This performance was prompted by a year-long dialogue, including questions such as, what were your first understandings that your body was disabled? How did your emerging understanding of yourself affect your gender identity? 
And how does disabled embodiment open us to the possibility of a deeper engagement with the universal phenomena of transitions in embodiment? The performers took those questions and from them devised their own pieces that provide answers. I shall now go through some of the scenes from this production. One scene that really stands out to me in this production is a movement piece involving one person in a wheelchair and another person without one. It's a strikingly beautiful movement to me, and the dialogue is powerful. The image I'm showing you is of two black dancers wearing gold and white. One of them is wearing a crown, are posed against a dark, earthly back, earthy background. They both glow under the stage lights. One lies on the ground with one leg up. The other leans sideways in their wheelchair, one arm out with fingers extended, one leg up with their foot balancing the other dancer's legs. One of the dancers, um, pictured on the left, Antoine Hunter, has some of the writing read to the some of his writing read to the audience by a narrator. When I think about birthing, I think about my mother's decision to not have an abortion. It's dangerous bringing a black and brown body into this world. Another thing he says is, it was so much more normal to imagine a white, able-bodied, normatively gendered person dancing, having sex, stroking it is whatever it is I stroke, easier because looking into mirrors was such a task. To be born like you, like me, is like being born into a world without qualifiers for us. How is it you existed anyway? This helped stigmatize disability by showing a person in a wheelchair and a deaf person dancing elegantly and doesn't bring any particular attention to the fact that they're both disabled, but rather just shows their raw existence. Another performer, Maria Palacios, appears in several scenes during the piece to give monologues about her life. I have an image of her here. She is a Latino woman with dark bangs and her long hair pulled back. Her eyes closed, lips pursed sensuously. She's wearing a black blouse with crocheted lace trim, shoulders cut out to reveal bare skin, her hands held uh, um, out from her lips, fingers spread like she is describing something delicious. You can see just the top of the wheels of her wheelchair. Some of her quotes are, Stubbornness runs in my family. I was meant to be a fuck you at the beginning and the end. I, I choose to be human because I don't need to dance in a club without border fences. And I choose to reject the fear-driven assumptions that my crip body is unworthy or incapable of pleasure. Palacios is choosing to unapologetically express herself in these monologues. She directly confronts the stereotypes the stereotype that people with disabilities are asexual beings by talking about how she loves sex. She talks about pleasuring herself in one of her scenes and how great it feels, which demystifies the often held stigma surrounding disability and sexuality. One last performer in the piece I would like to cover is Leah Lakshmi Piepsna Samarsina. Leah is pictured here as a brown femme with glasses and asymmetrical curly turquoise hair sits sitting in a wooden chair, wearing a shiny gold dress, holding a notebook on their lap, the other hand gesturing expressively, a can propped up to their legs, extended in front of them, wearing gold sandals. Leah gives a monologue about crip wisdom, which is a term used in the disability community for when older disabled people, crip elders, depart advice onto younger kin about living as a person with a disability. Leah talks about having chronic illnesses and being autistic and how they have very little energy from day to day. They tell the people in the audience with the same disabilities as them about how they have learned to adapt in, to their body and mind and manage to organize mostly from their bedroom. While that is more commonplace now because of the pandemic, people with disabilities have been organizing virtually since long before the COVID-19 outbreak. Leah's crip wisdom is a way of normalizing disability and suggests that instead of trying to live on as close to an able-bodied life schedule as possible, to instead accept your disabilities and accommodate yourself. Birthing, Dying, Becoming Crip Wisdom was performed at the ODC Theater in San Francisco and sold out to an 800-seat theater. The production was so popular that a recording of it was made and it is available to stream on Vimeo. That is how I was able to view it. 
It is accessible with enclosed captions and audio descriptions. Birthing, Dying, Becoming Crip Wisdom is a very unique performance piece that conquers the stigma surrounding disability through performance that centers disabled people at the margins of margins and unabashedly exposes topics considered taboo in a way that normalizes things that are sadly not normal. There is, a more, there is more work to be done by Sins Invalid that demonstrates this, and hopefully in the future, it will inspire more performers with disabilities to come forth and speak their raw, uncensored truths. And here is my bibliography. So uh, I guess now is uh, it's now the time for questions, uh, comments. If there are no questions or comments, then um, I'll I'll mute myself. Sorry, I read. Did you not see? I, I plugged a question into the chat. Uh, I, I did not see that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, is it on the room chat? Oh, uh, question. oh, there's a question and answers. Uh, Sorry, I didn't see that part. I plugged it under, yeah, the room chat. Oh. But I can just say it aloud if it's easier. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't find it, so. <laughs> My fault. Um, Sorry. Right. I want to ask, is this company that produced the production you've been talking about, are they working on any new productions at the moment? Um, and or do you know how they adapted to the pandemic? Uh, yes, they did work on a, a, a production recently um, in the fall. Um, called We Love Like Barnacles. Um, it's about climate change, the climate crisis, and how it relates to the disability community. Um, and I, I believe they performed it in a theater with no audience. I'm not entirely sure. The details are on their website, if you want me to give you the link to their website. Um, and I think they're going to do other performances of that production in the future. If you could, that would be amazing. Thank you. All right. You don't have to do it now, though. I know it's a bit of a time crunch. No, it's fine. I got you. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, your presentation. It was really oh, lovely you. to see these pictures, and um, your descriptions of them were really well done. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was lovely.
Oh, and thank you, Amy, for uh, for interpreting for me to make this presentation more accessible. Yes, thank you so much for that. <laughs>